Hello guys, my name is Piers Katz and today we're going to see how we can deal with authentication using tokens and refresh tokens from a client perspective in ASP.NET. First of all, let's go to our project. I have a weather forecast solution and I have a weather forecast API with two controllers, a weather forecast controller that uh, it's the default uh, weather forecast controller that we get uh, from the API template, but uh, I have also decorated with the authorized attribute so only Siding users can access it and also have an identity controller with two endpoints the sign in endpoint and the refresh token endpoint now both endpoints return an identity response and if we go to our identity response it has a boolean that represents if our request was success or not a nullable token a nullable refresh token and an innumerable of errors and that shouldn't be nullable now to see how that works, let me debug that and I'll also open Postman and if I try to get the weather forecasts, I'll get back 401 unauthorized but if I go and try to sign in and I have already created the request uh, we have uh, one user created in our application with the username Spiros and password123 so if I hit that I will get back a token and a refresh token so if I go and copy the token and in our get request uh, go to authorization I select bearer token as the type and I paste the token in here and hit send again as you can see I got back some weather forecasts now I can continue hit that endpoint but uh, after a while since I have made uh, on purpose my token to expire after one minute we will get back uh, an unauthorized response again so let's wait for one minute of the camera and now we get unauthorized now what uh, we do in that uh, occasion is not uh, try to sign in again because that's uh, what uh, we have the refresh tokens a common practice to have short living tokens and uh, refresh them for security reasons so I have already created another request for refreshing our tokens. If I go to body, uh, we need to fill the token and the refresh token. So let's copy the token and paste it here. And then let's do the same for the refresh token. Let's copy that. Let's put it in there. Let's hit send. And again, we got back a token and the refresh token without the need of uh, putting our credentials again. And now if I go and paste the new token, and try to get the forecast again I will get them all now let's see how we can handle that from a client application and I have a Blazor WebAssembly application in here uh, so I have a sign-in page just a simple form uh, with a username and a password and uh, when we fill that form we have an identity service and we try to sign in our user and uh, if I go to the implementation of this sign in method as you can see we hit the the sign in endpoint and then we get the response back and also I should have a check here if the identity response is success and negate that and then I should return in here the identity response and if it is success, I use uh, the local storage nugget package to add to my local storage the token and the refresh token. There's not required to use blaze.local storage package. You can always write your own JavaScript. And uh, anyway, now back to our sign in page. If we sign in successfully, we show the user an OK, else uh, all the errors. And let's go and see that in action. So I'll hit the debug button again. And uh, when our when our API starts, uh, the WebAssembly application will load on our browser. So if I go to sign in, if for example, I put for password one two and hit sign in, we get wrong email or password from the API. But if I put the correct password, which is one two three, we'll get back OK. And if I go to the Dev Tools. And in the application, as you can see in the local storage, we have a token and a refresh token. That's the default way to authorize if uh, we are using a Blazor WebAssembly application. But uh, 
that could be somewhere in your database if that was a server hosted application and uh, we also have the fetch data endpoint but uh, for now we get unauthorized so let's fix that first of all in my program.cs i register one http client and it's the one that i use in uh, the identity service and the same one that i use in the fetch data page and we need a way to add the token to the http client header so what we are going to do is create an http interceptor so that uh, we will intercept the request of a specific client because we might have many and add the headers before the request so i'll go in my client project and inside the identity folder i will create a new class i will call that identity delegating handler and i'm going to need two things the local storage service and the identity service so let's add them private read only i local storage service let's call that local storage and also the identity service so private read only i identity service and that would be our identity service now let's initialize them through the constructor okay and that class needs to inherit from the delegating handler so delegating handler now there are some methods that we can um, override in this delegating handler class so let's see them it's the dispose sends and async equals get has code and to string and we will need to override the send async method since that's what uh, we are using okay let's make that async and let's await that as well okay now we need to add the headers to the http client so i will create a private method so private async task and i will call that add headers async and i will accept the http request message so request and in here i will try to get the token from the local storage so i say var token equals with await local storage get item async and that would be a string and the name of it will be token obviously you could have that uh, in a const or something like that there's a lot, a lot of things that uh, you could do different in that application but uh, we only focus on intercepting our request so we can uh, work with tokens and refresh tokens and now if the token is not null so if token is not null in our request dot headers dot authorization we will set it equal to new authentication header value and the, the schema will be bearer and the value will be our token so now i will go to my program.cs and i'll need to register that identity delegate in handler so i'll say builder dot services dot add transient identity delegated handler and now to intercept the the calls from the client http client all i need to say is add http message handler and specify the type of it and that will be our identity delegated handler so now let's try to run that again oh i forgot to call that in the send async method so i'll say await add headers async and i'll pass the request and let's try that again let's debug that If we go to our fetch data we get error unauthorized and let's try to sign in so spiros one two three and okay and now if we go to our fetch data as you can see we are authorized and we get back the weather forecasts okay but now as uh, happened uh, with postman in one minute our token will expire and we won't be able to get back the forecasts so obviously we don't want every minute to show a pop-up to the user to put uh, their credential and sign in again 
So what we are going to do, since we already have an ATP interceptor, we will see if the token has expired or is about to expire and try to refresh it silently without the user notices. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create another, pray, another private method, I will call that before HTTP we call async and we will also need the request message again so HTTP request message request and now since we use the same client uh, for getting the forecast and for uh, signing in etc we need to make accept check before we try to refresh uh, the token if uh, the path contains the word identity because if it contains it maybe the user tries to log in or send a request about forgetting uh, their password etc so we don't need to try to intercept that call so we will take the absolute path from the request so var absolute path equals with the request dot request uri dot absolute path and if that's null we will just set it to string dot empty okay and now we'll say that if the absolute path contains the word identity return and it's better if you spell it correctly now if it doesn't contain it we will refresh our token so first of all let's take uh, the token from the local storage so var token equals with await local storage dot get item async and we need to get the token and now that token has some claims on it one of them is uh, the expiration time so we need to get that so i will create the static class I will call that JWT helpers and I have already created a method for passing the claims from a JSON web token I will just copy that and paste it since it's outside the scope of this video okay let's add some namespaces okay that's a common way to get the claims from a J WT token and maybe use it if you are in a Blazor web assembly application in your custom authentication state provider so you can use authorized and uh, unauthorized views and combine them with uh, roles and policy but again that's outside of the scope of this video we won't do any of that here we only need the claims from that JWT so let's go back to our interceptor and I will copy paste another method for getting the expiration time from the token okay that's it let's uh, see what the method does it's a boolean try get token expiration with an out parameter the token expiry daytime offset if we can get it so we have a try catch block uh, we try to take the expiration from the claims all I say is uh, claims dot first where the type is equals to exp that's uh, the expiration as a string in our JWT and then I convert it to a daytime offset and that from unix time seconds as you can see it converts it converts a unix time expressed as the number of seconds that have elapsed since the 1st of January 97 and if that succeeded we return true so in here we will say if not try get token expiration and uh, the claims is the JWT helper dot pass claims from JWT and we will pass our JWT so token and for the out parameter we will use a new variable called expiration okay so if that's false return else let's calculate the difference between our daytime and the token expiration daytime so var difference equals with expiration we know that's not null dot uh, value minus daytime offset let's say utc now and now let's say that uh, if uh, 
the difference in total minutes is smaller or equal to 0 0.5 so half a minute await identity service dot refresh token async now finally let's call that method before we send our request so let's go to our send async and let's say await before HTTP call async and let's pass the request and try to debug our application for one last time and then we will go to our identity controller and we put a breakpoint inside the refresh token endpoint so let's open our app, let's sign in Spiros123 ok, fetch data, we get our data and we continue to get our data but after half a minute we will hit that endpoint finally and now as you can see we hit our refresh token endpoint so our token had expired but we will refresh that and we will not see the unauthorized message but we will get the weather forecasts so I'll hit continue and we get the weather forecasts so one last thing although in uh, this application we use Blazor WebAssembly the logic is the same for all uh, type of applications we added an intercept onto our HTTP client and before we send its request we check if uh, our token has expired or is about to expire and we silently refresh it so the user don't have to put their credentials again if you like this video please like and subscribe thank you for watching and have a nice one